Hey guys, hope you are all having a fantastic day. Today we finally return to the trenches on this long game. Once again, we didn't really get a lot of news today. I am going to Tokyo drift through all the small but important developments that took place and then recap our performance today. Before we start, let me quickly state that I am not a financial advisor, and that all content discussed in this channel is simply information gathered that I deem important for people to know, so that they can make informed decisions. All efforts are aimed to better understand the nature of the current market in anticipation of the greatest squeeze in financial history. Let's get started. In a quick overlook, stocks indexes rose today as markets reopened after the Christmas holiday. Investors assessed the spread of the new Omicron variant and felt bullish, leading a good rally for all major indexes. Holiday sales rose 8.5% in 2021 from last year, the fastest pace in 17 years, according to MasterCard data. These results come with the backdrop of supply chain disruptions, higher prices with inflation and of course, Omicron variant. This was predicted to happen, and much of it can be attributed to consumer psychology. We know last year, holiday season was very hard since a lot of states had lockdowns implemented. This year, people were craving the full holiday experience to go out and shop, and now we are here. However, the 8.5% rise from this year in comparison to last year isn't nothing to brag about and shows that ever without restriction and high consumer spending, the growth rate isn't all that bullish. I want to quickly talk about inflation, supply chain problems and the current administration. If you have seen my videos, you know that I cover the Evergrande situation taking place in China every week. I have gone to great lengths to explain why it is that China was so keen to take the giant developer down. As I have explained before, this is because Evergrande was too powerful, and could have been considered too big to fail. China did not like that, especially given that the management at Evergrande had started leveraging their power to do bad decisions that were negatively impacting ordinary people. China has a terrible government, but I do respect and commend their decision to tackle against Evergrande. Companies that are too big to fail represent a huge risk for society, and will always ensure profits, even if it means defrauding their own customers. This is a story that has become far too common here in the United States, sadly enough, and current levels of inflation might drive the current administration to turn to antitrust enforcers to make a more balanced and competitive playfield for companies. As you guys know, prices have been rising steadily for months now, mostly due to inflation. The Fed's inability to control it is making the current president look weak, threatening the party's chances for the next election. As a measure to combat and tame the problem, Biden is turning to the federal government's antitrust authorities to crack down on the lack of corporate competition that is becoming far too threatening to the economy. Rising levels of corporate concentration in any economy will empower a small amount of large players in each industry to raise prices higher than a more competitive marker should allow. As we have shown with endless evidence, companies have been abusing pandemic relief efforts in the current difficult circumstances to heighten prices as much as possible. The pandemic allowed them to eliminate much of the competition they had, because the Fed's policies mostly helped big corporations that were mostly Wall Street-backed. This huge bias left a lot of small business owners in bankruptcy. As a result, we now have a much much smaller competitive market, and the smaller the competition is within any sector, the more dangerous it becomes, which is something that China understood and quickly acted upon. The bigger fish in America get away with far too much, and though politicians and economists know it, they don't do much about it since they are paid to act according to what their donors want. However, with Biden's legacy and potential rerun as president being questioned, he is now taking steps to quickly start addressing the problem and find a solution to it, at least short term. The White House officials already conceded that their antitrust moves are unlikely to reduce costs for businesses and consumers immediately, but they say the efforts will be more effective down the road, which is true. Corporate culpability for rising prices still gets pegged as being unclear, a message that the media loves repeating. Corporate culpability for high prices is 100% correct, though don't expect significant punishment to be placed. With food, gas and other sectors prices rising, the current administration is coming under heavy pressure to even come off as if their policy is having a modicum of impact, because right now, it's always like inflation is ruling and controlling politics, instead of the opposite. Online sales grew 11% during this period as compared to last year, despite a mixed Cyber Monday. Online shopping accounted for 21% of total sales these holidays, which was an increase from the 20.6% we saw in 2020 and the 14.6% we saw in 2019. 
you will find no shortage of so-called experts, grifters, naysayers and feuders telling you to invest in big corporations like Amazon, but tell you that investing in GameStop is a bad approach. Even as the company continues to hire, which last I heard was a sign of growth and good performance, Wall Street favored media sites like Benzinga are not missing any opportunity to tell you that in 2022, you need to consider forgetting about going to the moon and instead try to identify a better investing approach. It is so funny to me when I read their articles, they completely ignore everything going on with GameStop or AMC, and instead hyperfocus on uncertainty. Forget about better performance, more revenue, branching out to new services and products and overall company management. Instead, they will have you focus on what some weird never heard off expert has to say. You then look at what his market predictions were, and they were all wrong. I mentioned this because the media is going to work overtime this year to get you to sell your holdings in order to get you to invest everywhere. I have even seen that coming from people with big followings on social media. As I always say, invest your money wherever you want it, at the end of the day, it's your money and you worked hard for it. What I do want to impress upon you is that not everyone will have your best interests, and that they will leverage their power to transfer money from your account onto theirs. Stay woke, because shills and sellouts, as well as the bot media, are all out to get you, and I have a feeling that they will double their efforts this upcoming year. Lastly, I want to quickly update you on the Evergrande situation. The developer giant said that they have resumed their construction at most of its housing projects, with their chairman urging Evergrande to meet its target of delivering 39,000 units of apartments in December. China's central bank has also pledged greater support for economy, and reiterated their aim to promote healthy growth in the property sector and to protect home buyers' rights. Evergrande has more coupons on two bonds that are due on Tuesday. They have already been labeled as defaulters, with its share splurging 90% this year. I cannot wait to see what happens, and will keep you properly informed as the situation develops. With all that said, let's now talk about today. The Fed submitted over $1.580 trillion in reverse repo operations today. Dark pool trades for AMC accounted for 60% of the total volume today, while dark pool trades for GameStop accounted for 54% of the total volume today. AMC had a larger amount of buy orders than its sell orders, with GameStop also having a larger amount of buy orders than sell orders. Now, let's talk about performance. AMC traded bullishly, gaining under 1% for the day. AMC appeared to be running upwards through the pre-market. Upon market opening, AMC encountered a lot of volatility, and bounced on the lower band of the VWAP twice. After breaking above the VWAP, AMC ran to 29.38 and was able to consolidate above 28, which was a really good sign for me. AMC would trade sideways, breaking support but not dropping too low. It would test the VWAP again, bouncing off of it and closing at 28.70, above the VWAP. As for what to expect tomorrow, AMC will find support at 28.44, 27.50 and 27. Resistance will be met at 29.22, 29.50 and 30.39. AMC consolidated really good today, and I want to see it testing resistance at 29.50 tomorrow if we are to continue performing well and moving upwards. GameStop traded bearishly, losing over 2% for the day. Upon market opening, GameStop dipped from 153 all the way down to 140. After reaching this low, GME bounced up, eventually breaking above the VWAP and consolidating above 147. GameStop closed at 148.31, above the VWAP. As for what to expect tomorrow, GME will find support at 147, 141 and 138. Resistance will be met at 149.74, 151 and 155. GameStop had a nasty fall early today, but it consolidated pretty high. However, if it is to start gaining ground, GameStop will need to climb above 150 and consolidate above it once and for all, though 160 would be preferable. And that is all that I have for you guys today. Thank you all for watching my video. Let me know in the comments section below where do you see AMC and GameStop in the long term future. I personally think AMC could become a giant in the blockchain sector, just by the way they are embracing it. GameStop I think has the potential to become a huge marketplace for NFTs as well as a huge retailer that better competes against the likes of Amazon and Walmart. I literally envision these two companies being completely different from what they currently are. I know theaters are not going anywhere and the way GameStop is going, they really seem to be aiming to become huge competitor in two different sectors, the blockchain and retail, 
but that is just me. What do you think? Let me know all about it in the comments below. If you want to support this channel, I have a Patreon link in the description as well as some one-time donation links for Cash App and PayPal. Thank you again for being a part of this channel. I will continue striving for better content. Enjoy the rest of your day. Keep on buying the dip into the moon.